Good morning, Wesley, and all anywhere who join with us on this glorious day. If you have not already done so, please take a moment and uh, either now or at the end of the service, register your attendance. Let us know your prayer concerns and if you're so inclined to give back to God. Thank you so much for doing this. We both appreciate your generosity and your presence. Please check out our website. We are adding new things each and every week. There's a lot of information you need to know, uh, especially this week. Uh, We're also this week spotlighting another graduating senior, Jensen Bell. God bless you, Jensen, in your journey. Uh, we're very proud of you. Don't forget, uh, we have begun in-person worship here in our sanctuary. If you're ready to join us, come and join us each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. right here uh, in the sanctuary. We'll be glad to see you. Uh, that's enough from me. Uh, let's turn our attention to our audience of one. Let's worship.
Please bow your heads and humble your hearts as we go into the presence of the Father. Good morning, Father. You are holy and righteous. You are merciful, loving, and kind. God, you are good. We've waited all week to come here to be in your presence, to come together in spirit, to kneel before you. And this morning we praise your holy name. God, you are worthy. You created the stars and you know them by name. And God, you created each one of us. You know us well. You know the very hairs on our heads. You know when we sit and when we rise. And you know our thoughts. And God, we thank you that we can say anything to you right here, right now, in your presence. We have concerns from this week and from this season of our lives. And you know them, Lord, but we still name them to you. Some of us have been lonely. God, we've been alone and isolated and we are in great need of community. That's the way you made us and we know you understand. Some of us are in need of healing. We've had illness of our bodies. We've had mental illness. And God, it's not just us. This nation needs you, this world needs you. You are the God who heals. Heal us, Father. We confess to you that we have not exhibited fruit. You freely give us the fruit of the Spirit, but you told us we have to remain in you, to abide in you, and we confess that we have not done that but it is our heart's desire. We want to remain in you, Lord. So guide us, lead us to you, turn our hearts back to you, forgive us of our sins, and make us one with you. That is our greatest desire. Father, we have things on our hearts that are too personal to name aloud both praises and concerns. And we sit here before you in silence and name them to you. God, we know that you know our hearts. You hear our prayers. You hear us when we call, when we cry out to you. And this morning, as we kneel, we surrender ourselves to you, to be in your will, to be righteous in your eyes. We pray that as we sing, as we worship you, as we listen and learn, that it would be pleasing in your eyes because we honor you. And God, as a body of Christ, we now come to you together as one. And we say the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please receive this offering of music as we are mindful of our giving back to God. and boys and girls. How are you all today? I'm so excited to be here. Have you ever went fishing? Did you enjoy fishing? 
And did you catch a fish? Fishing is a great sport. It is so exciting when you catch that fish. And the great thing about fishing is it doesn't matter how old or young you are, you can always be good at fishing. Today, our Bible story has something to do with fishing. When Jesus was walking along the seashore, he saw two brothers named Peter and Andrew. He knew that Peter and Andrew made their living by fishing. And he shouted to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And do you know what happened? They dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. Jesus wants you and me to fish for people also. And all we have to do is tell them what Jesus has done for us and what Jesus wants to do for them. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to become fishes, fishing for people. Help us tell others what you have done for us and what you want to do for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I am delighted to uh, be able to say that we are back. We are worshiping here in our sanctuary. Well, at least some of us are back. Uh, and others of you will join us when you are ready. Uh, and so I cannot wait for us all to be back together again. Until further notice, our in-person worship will be held at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning right here in our sanctuary. Uh, please go to our website to check out the protocols for how we're going to be doing this. It's very important for you to look at that and, and to read them and to follow those protocols. Thank you. Uh, let me remind you that we will be uh, progressing toward other reopening objectives as we move forward. For instance, we are now uh, looking at returning to or having as a goal returning to in-person Sunday school beginning on June the 28th. And until that time, we will continue to offer other in-person opportunities. Our youth met last week at Taco Ray's and we're uh, we played some wonderful Bible trivia. Uh, this coming Wednesday, they will be meeting at Starbucks over by the mall at 530, a little bit different time, 530 Starbucks over by the mall. All youth are invited. Uh, groups are meeting on campus. Sunday school classes are already doing a hybrid Zoom in-person uh, meetings. And don't forget, our office is open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 3. Our school is back and up and running. So please, please keep the church in your prayers. Uh, keep our city, our county, our state, our nation, our world. Uh, these are indeed painful times, and we need prayers for peace now more than ever before. God bless you. Our gospel lesson for this morning is, comes from Matthew's gospel beginning in the fourth chapter, the 18th verse. Hear then these words from the gospel according to St. Matthew. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left their boat and their father, and they followed him. Now, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the gospel and curing every disease and every sickness among all the people. And this is the gospel of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Thanks be to God. You know, as we come back together, we are also very excited just to be able to see each other. And for months, all I could think about was getting back into this sanctuary and beginning to worship with you once again. However, as wonderful as that is, it has me a bit worried, but probably not for the reason you think it is. 
Because now that it is a reality, at least for some of us, the question that keeps coming to my mind is this, will we be complacent? As more and more of us continue to come back to church, will we be so satisfied that we are just back together again that we will forget why we are here? It is to this question that I want to address our first sermon back together. Now, with these words in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus summons his first two disciples, Simon Peter and Andrew, and of course, their brothers. He saw them casting their fishing nets into the Sea of Galilee, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, the Scripture says that, uh, that and it tells us that he saw these two other brothers, James and John, and they were also fishermen, and they were mending their nets with their father Zebedee. And Jesus calls them too. And then the Bible says that all four men immediately dropped what they were doing, and they followed Jesus, and they heeded his call. Jesus simply called them and he followed, they followed him. I think that's amazing. That's another sermon for another time. Now, in telling them that he was going to make them fishers of men, Jesus was saying to them, in effect, that he was going to give them an entirely new vocation. And what does Matthew's gospel say next? Which seems like, in some of your Bibles, it's going to seem like this is really not a part of this story, that it's a part of the next story. Uh, by the way, it's very important for us to know that in the original Greek, remember there's no punctuation, so that's the question for us. Is that next section of Scripture, is it a part of this story or part of the next story? And here are the words that were said. And he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity among all the people. So why does it say that? Uh, is that really a part of the last story, or is it just what happens next? Well, indeed, it is what happens next, but it is also Jesus immediately taking these two pair of brothers and beginning their education. In effect, what he was telling them is, this is how you cast your nets, not for fish, but for men, women, and children. It is a part of the story of Jesus' calling of the disciples. And it's, it's very important that we know that. And so Jesus goes all around Galilee, and what does he do? He teaches in the synagogues. He gets right into the heart of their community life, right into their context, and he preaches the gospel of the kingdom, his own kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. I say, and he heals every disease and every infirmity of all the people. Now, can't you just see Jesus as Peter and Andrew and James and John are in tow, as, as he has them in tow traipsing all over Galilee? Can't you just hear him say to them, boys, this is how you do it. This is how you catch men and women and boys and girls for the kingdom of God. Now, we have just spent nearly three months cooped up in our homes and keeping our distance from strangers and from church members and even family members. And hopefully we have spent some of that past three months journeying with Jesus from the cross to the resurrection to his glorious ascension, culminating with the outpouring of his Holy Spirit on all flesh. And now here we are. Some of us are back together in his sanctuary for the very first time in three long months and hopefully we can take everything that we have seen and heard, everything that we have learned and experienced, everything that we have been blessed with and begin to reclaim our former lives. Because it is time for us to become once again fishers of men, women, boys, and girls. It is time. We have heard the call of Jesus Christ and we have gathered in his sanctuary not just to worship him and then go back home. We have heard the call of Jesus Christ to follow him 
wherever he leads us. Now, we may, may not be actual fishermen like Peter and Andrew casting our nets into the sea, but we can cast into the nets of our jobs, into the nets of our studies, into the nets of our relationship, into the nets of our marriages, into the nets of our hopes and dreams, and what is more, we should be expecting some kind of return. Jesus takes our everyday life and he gives us a higher calling just like he did for Peter and Andrew. We have heard the call of Jesus and we may be like James and John, mending the broken nets of our relationship, the broken nets of our jobs and our studies and our marriages and our hopes and our dreams, trying to knit them back together where they have come undone, especially over these past three months. But Jesus tells James and John and us that he did not come to knit back together our lives. Instead, he came to give us a new life. He tells us to follow him because what we are trying to create for ourselves might be good, but he has something far better in mind for us, something that we were created for from the very beginning. So how do we do this? How do we follow him and become fishers of men, women, boys, and girls? Well, let's go back to our scripture lesson for today because he shows us just as he showed Peter and Andrew, James and John. First notice that he went, as the Bible says, all about Galilee. He doesn't just, uh, he doesn't just get too comfortable uh, where he is, and he's telling us not to get too comfortable in our seats here in the sanctuary or in our homes this morning. We are only here for an hour or so, folks. There are another 167 hours to go before we're back here again, which gives us plenty of time to find those men, women, boys, and girls that still do not know Jesus and do not know his kingdom. Jesus explored the places where they were. He did not just sit around and hang out in his comfort zone and expect the fish to come to him. That's not how you fish for people. Instead, he went all about that place, that place what, that was their home. He made it his own place. He put his, uh, pr uh, he put his presence everywhere in it. And that is what we are called to do as well, to go to our own places, all about Nederland and all about Port Natchez and all about Groves and all about Port Arthur and all about Mid-County and all about Southeast Texas or wherever we are in our relationships or wherever we are in our jobs, our studies, our lives, we go all about them both literally and figuratively. We put ourselves out there. We go and we find those fish. We don't wait for them to come to us. And next, the gospel tells us that Jesus taught in their synagogue and he preached the gospel of the kingdom. He went right into the heart of their communities and he taught them the truth. And what is the truth? It is the gospel of the kingdom. Now notice that it's not the gospel of church membership. It's not even the gospel of social activism. It is also not the gospel of my ego or your ego. It is the gospel of the kingdom, period, with nothing added. And then finally, the scripture says that he also went about healing every disease and about and healing every infirmity among the people. And he did not merely just go and tell them the truth. He also ministered to them. Now, we may, not, we may not be able to perform miraculous cures like Jesus, but we can heal the diseases of their broken hearts. We can heal the diseases of their broken homes, their broken marriages, their broken friendships, their broken souls. How so? We can bring them love. We don't have to bring them any expertise that we don't have but we can bring them love, and we all have this kind of love because we have experienced this love from God, and that kind of love is the only thing that really matters. Now, this morning, you might be asking yourself, why? Why would I want to fish for men, women, boys, and girls? I just want to come here and worship and see my friends and maybe 
support some of the programs of the church that if I like them. I would rather just keep throwing my net into the sea of my life. I would prefer to keep mending the brokenness of my own life for myself. How can I handle all of that without letting go of the other? Can't I just visit Jesus in peace? Do I really have to follow him? Why? Well, there is a reason, and you're probably not going to like the answer. Why are we called to become fishers of men, women, boys, and girls? Because this is what our salvation is all about. Salvation is becoming like Jesus Christ, which means joining ourselves to the mission of Jesus Christ. I don't care what other pastors say about this. There is no salvation without becoming like Jesus Christ and following where he leads, period, full stop, end of discussion. Every one of us is called to become fishers of men, women, boys, and girls. We are called to go out and teach and preach the gospel of the kingdom and to bring healing to the diseases and infirmities of those whom God has sent us to. He said to you and to me and anyone who hears my voice today, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And he showed us how to do it. And now he expects us to join him in this great mission. So, what are we going to do? Will we just be content to be uh, being back together and wait for the people to kind of just come to us? Or will we hear him calling, drop our net, so to speak, and follow him? As we return to in-person worship, let us resolve not to be content just to come back together and enjoy each other as wonderful as that might be. Instead, let us heed his call to get up out of our seats, both here and at home, and follow him all the way to the kingdom of God. And along the way, let's invite some others to join us, okay? Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you have confronted us with your challenge to follow you and become fishers of men, women, boys, and girls. And that is a profound calling, one that scares us. And yet it is time. It is time, Lord, for us to get up and to follow you. Forgive us, dear Lord, for just wanting what we want for our lives and not what you want for us. Forgive us for being content with just our broken lives when you have a whole new life in store for us. Help us to see that what you've got in mind for us is so much better than anything we could ever dream up on our own. And that as we follow you, we may become more and more and more like you. Thank you, dear Lord, for blessing the blessing of allowing us to just come back together. Help us not to linger too long so that we might miss the excitement that you have in store for us as we become fishers of men, women, boys, and girls for your kingdom. All this we ask in the name of the master fisherman, Jesus Christ, to whom all glory, honor, and worship is due, along with his Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever unto the ages of ages. Amen. Would you join us as we close with more praises to God?
follow Jesus and become fishers for his kingdom. And you are sent in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forward into this glorious day and live in God's peace. Amen.